Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's edition of Barnes Takeout, your daily serving of art from the Barnes Foundation in Philadelphia. I'm Bill Perthes, the Bernard C. Watson Director of Adult Education, and happy Juneteenth, um, and happy Father's Day, or at least uh, an early happy Father's Day. Uh, in celebration of both of those, of Juneteenth as well as Father's Day, I've chosen a painting that's by the American artist Horace Pippin. It's in Gallery 5, and here we are in Gallery 5, and we're looking at the West Wall, and the Pippin I'm talking about is here over the door. Let me show it to you. It was painted by Horace Pippin in uh, 1934, and it's called Abraham Lincoln and his father building their cabin on Pigeon Creek. Uh, and as I said, I chose this both in celebration of Juneteenth as well as for Father's Day. Uh, as you probably know, Juneteenth is the oldest nationally celebrated commemoration of the ending of slavery in, in the United States. And it commemorates this day in 1865 when Union soldiers led by Major General Gordon Granger uh, entered Galveston, Texas with the news that the Civil War had ended and that all slaves were now free. This came two and a half years after President Lincoln uh, declared the Emancipation Proclamation, which took effect in January 1st, uh, 1863. On that day in 1865, Major General Granger read Proclamation Number 3, which said, and I quote, the people of Texas are informed that in accordance with the proclamation from the executive of the United States, all slaves are free. This involves an absolute equality of rights and rights of property between former masters and slaves. And the connection theretofore existing between them becomes that between employer and hired laborer. And in this picture, appropriately enough for uh, both of these occasions, uh, Horace Pippin uh, portrays a moment when uh, the adolescent Abraham Lincoln and his father are clearing land and building their cabin on a new plot of land in uh, Little Pigeon Creek in Indiana. Uh, and this uh, event more or less takes place um, in uh, 1816, 1817. Um, the Lincoln family moved from where they where Lincoln was born um, across the river in uh, Ohio, or across the Ohio River rather in Kentucky. Uh, Lincoln was born uh, on February 12th, 1809 uh, in Sinking Spring uh, Farm uh, there in, in Indiana. Uh, but uh, the family moved across the Ohio River when uh, Lincoln was seven for a couple reasons. One, there was a, a dispute over the title of their land in Kentucky, and uh, his father uh, didn't have the funds to be able to, to contest that. But also because um, Kentucky had been admitted to the Union in 1792 as a slave state. And uh, Lincoln's father, Thomas, was morally opposed to slavery. Uh, Indiana, on the other hand, uh, had been excluded from slavery by way of the Northwest Ordinance. Uh, and this picture is one of four that portray uh, important moments in the life of the 16th president. Um, so as I mentioned here, we see uh, Lincoln, who I read as being the figure in the in the foreground, and his father behind him. Now, this scene actually takes place when Lincoln was would have been about eight years old, uh, so uh, he's shown perhaps a little older than that. Um, but his he's working with his father to uh, clear the land. This uh, land that they settled on uh, in Little Pigeon Creek was extremely remote. There were no roads or paths that even led to it. It was densely forested. Uh, so in order to 
um, clear land, to have land to be able to farm to support themselves. They had to they had to clear that land, and uh, in the process, they used the uh, the trees that they were cutting down to build a more permanent. Uh, housing for them. They had actually moved there the year before and had spent that first winter in uh, temporary uh, shelters. Um, and in many ways, the picture is is very evocative. Uh, despite the fact that Pippin used a fairly limited range of colors, he uses them extremely effectively, very dynamically. Um, we, If we look at just the landscape to, to begin with, it's uh, painted out of hues that are are common to uh, many of Pippin's works. That is, they're relatively dark. Um, they're somewhat tonal, so we get sort of lighter and darker tones that suggest things. Um, and it's it's very dense. It's We get a sense of the thickness of the forest. Um, and he's given us really remarkable details as well. So we get the leaves on the trees, um, and then he uses color as a way of um, really bringing out the figures. So the boldest colors in this picture are the, the white and the blue. And that white and blue is shared both in the shirts of the, of the figures of Lincoln and his father's father, as I'm reading it, is the figure in the blue shirt. And then those same colors are carried up into the sky. We get a sense of this clear sky, clear blue sky with these large puffy white clouds. There's a clarity to the to the picture space. And then Pippin gives us other details. For instance, the color of the leaves. And as we see them dotting the air here, suggesting that we're moving towards autumn. Um, and that creates a sense of sort of urgency in, in the picture as we see the two figures hewing the logs in order to build the cabin that they would need for the, the coming winter. As I mentioned, uh, Lincoln lived in this cabin with his family uh, from 1816 until 1830, so until he was tw 21, so a young man until he moved out um, on his own. And in many ways, this picture also uh, prefigures some important upcoming moments in Lincoln's life. Uh, one is his stance on on slavery. Uh, as I mentioned, one of the reasons that his father moved the family from Kentucky to Indiana was in opposition to slavery. And needless to, needless to say, as the 16th president, Abraham Lincoln went on to uh, not only um, be the head of the Union Army to fight in the for the Civil War, but also through the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing slaves, and that emanci Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves in 10 um, states not under Union control. Um, and that was a very, that was a catalytic mo moment um, within the, in the Civil War. But in, it also, this picture also prefigures uh, the tra some tragedies in, um, in Lincoln's life. Just a year after this event would have taken place, um, Lincoln's mother, Nancy, died of uh, milk poisoning, something that was not, unfortunately, was not uncommon um, out where pasture land, clear pasture land was not available and uh, cows were foraging in the forest. Um, and uh, needless to say, we know the tragedy of uh, the assassination of of, uh, of Lincoln. Uh, so in many ways, this this picture both captures a, you know, a a bonding moment for Lincoln and his father as they literally, through their own hands, build the home for their for their family, but also suggests the kinds of tragedies that are are to coming to come. But also the important role that that Lincoln played in um, in creating the freedoms uh, of that the um, Civil War was was fought for. Um, so um, I hope this this picture uh, both creates a, a moment of celebration uh, for those of you celebrating uh, Juneteenth, but I also want to um, wish the best to all of my fellow fathers out there. Um, I just ask that you don't uh, put your your sons and your daughters through uh, quite as much labor as it seems uh, 
Lincoln and his father are uh, at work here in this this picture by Horace Pippin. Um, in any case, join us again for our next Barnes Takeout. Thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Collins, Neubauer Family Executive Director of the Barnes Foundation. I hope you enjoyed Barnes Takeout. Subscribe and make sure your post notifications are on to get daily servings of art. Thanks for watching and for your support of the Barnes Foundation.